all products and services featured are independently chosen by editors. However, Soaps.com may receive a commission on orders placed through its retail links, and the retailer may receive certain auditable data for accounting purposes. At the quarter main stables, Tracy returns from a ride and thanks Cody for letting her try a new saddle. Gregory shows up and apologizes for being late as he was taking in the sunset. They talk about the spectacular sunset, and Cody suggests they watch it together on some horses. Gregory passes, saying perhaps next time. Cody tells them a story about trying to impress a girl he liked when he was younger by climbing up on a pony for the first time, only to fall flat on his face. He ended up with eight stitches, but the girl sat next to him the next day on a bus. Tracy asks what the moral of the story is, and Cody says to reach high. Cody takes off, and Tracy says he's well-meaning. Gregory wishes everyone treated him like that, and he gives good advice. She invites him to stay for one of Sasha's fabulous dinners, but he says she needs to go to Coney Island. She laughs and has no desire to be around the Bensonhurst Brigade. He says he needs her there to tell him where he needs to stand, among other things. He needs her to be his backup in case he can't go to the wedding. Tracy won't entertain that idea and says he will preside over this wedding. And it's meant to be. He explains he's just covering his bases in case he loses his breath or can't read his notes. And if so, he'll need her to go on for him. Tracy is sure he is perfectly capable of marrying Brooke Lynn and Chase while being the most attractive man in the room. He thanks her for flattering him and says they need to get her to Coney Island. In the Quartermain nook, Michael comes home from work and tells Sasha how great she is doing with the cooking. He says not only is Olivia less stressed, but they all have access to their kitchen still. However, he is a bit surprised she took the job, given their history. He also feels terrible she walked away from deception and wishes he could have helped her work out a better deal in leaving. Sasha says she wanted to walk away, and Gladys already took all her money, so it's not like she has no practice not being wealthy. She said as she jumped at this job, what Olivia offered it, and she enjoys it. Michael would have lent her money to tide her over in her job search if she needed it. Sasha thanks him, but wouldn't have taken it. She likes being here, as she always longed to be a part of a family. She says now she gets to cook for people she knows and trusts. Sasha realizes maybe she should have asked him before taking the job, and she hopes she isn't making things awkward between him and Willow. Michael assures her she's not, and all the Quartermains agree that they love having her here. Sasha thanks him and says she doesn't see this as a step down from deception. She genuinely loves cooking and believes that her food makes people happy. She says she is happy seeing the love he and Willow share too. She had it once and may have it again. Suddenly Cody enters and asks, Have what? He explains he came to scrounge for leftovers, so Sasha offers to whip him something up. She leaves and Cody calls her amazing. Michael agrees and asks what his plans are for all that amazingness. Cody can't believe he just threw that out there. Michael says he sees the sparks between them and Sasha is one of the best people he knows. He hopes Cody is serious about her and will be good to her. Cody says he will be as good to her as she lets him. Sasha returns with some beef stew for Cody and asks where Michael is. Cody says he left, but not before warning him to treat her well. She says that's not Michael's job, and it's her job to ensure she's treated well. She also tells Cody he doesn't need a lecture from Michael to be good to her, as he already is. At Eva's gallery, Stella helps Trina stuff envelopes while telling her stories about their family. Trina tells Stella that she knows what she's doing, and it's working. Stella says she's just spending time with her, but Trina knows she's trying to help her move on and get closure. She admits she's no closer to figuring it out than the last time they talked. Stella says sometimes you just need a hug and shoulder to lean on, and offers Trina hers. They hug and get back to work. Jordan stops by and is glad to see them both so happy, but she's about to be a buttskill. She tells them there is a possibility Heather's case will be re-examined as her faulty hip poisoned her and caused her imbalances over the years. Stella has read about this in other patients, 
but still she doesn't think it can excuse Heather from being a cold-blooded killer. Jordan explains some people believe her poisoning directly caused her to go insane and kill.